Hi and welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to be taking a look at this 19 inch computer monitor which is broken and we're going to attempt to do a repair. I'm not uh, trying to repair this monitor because it has any value. Uh, certainly it's a very old model. Uh, it was probably manufactured somewhere in 2005 so it doesn't have any uh, value compared to today's uh, computer monitors but it's a nice exercise to try and uh, repair something like this and right now it's uh, plugged in and if we watch the uh, LED on the power button we can see it kind of tries to start and we get a very very slight blink but uh, no it doesn't uh, it doesn't want to start so I'm guessing it's a problem with the uh, power supply as it's often the case with these uh, monitors. The capacitors often uh, bulge, they go bad, the ESR goes through the roof and uh, sometimes you just have to replace the capacitors and you get a working monitor. So let's uh, turn this monitor over and uh, take a better look. So for safety I'm going to remove the power plug. As you can see, I have already removed the uh, back cover and the screws for this uh, uh, metal cover. And I must say this monitor is very, very heavy. They don't make them like this uh, these days. It has very thick uh, metal sheets. So let's start by removing this uh, piece right here. This uh, metal cover uh, shields the power supply and the logic board for this monitor. Here is a closer look uh, at our power supply and the logic board. The logic board um, is very small. It uh, just has an ASIC that uh, kind of uh, translates VGA or DVI input to LVDS output as well as offering the uh, control and the OSD. Let's take a closer look at this power supply board. It's a fairly typical construction. Like uh, on this side, we are generating the voltages required to drive the logic of uh, this LCD panel. And on this side right here, we have the uh, high voltage flyback converters to drive the, uh, in this case, we have four CCFL uh, backlight tubes. And let's try to identify uh, some of the blocks on this uh, power supply. So we have the input right here. It's uh, switched. We have a fuse. Um, we have a, an input filtering capacitor. What is this component right here? This one could be a um, resistor, an NTC. We then have a line filter or uh, also called a choke. We then get our bridge rectifier as well as the filtering capacitor and then we have um, our main switching transistor our transformer the output transistors and probably the output capacitors which will of course be the first ones to suffer in a power supply that doesn't use good quality capacitors let me just check the brand on these capacitors yeah, so it looks like these are elite capacitors. Where not, well, not so much elite in this case because they have swollen and uh, they have leaked. But I'm quite sure these are the output capacitors. Let me just check if they are 105C degree rated. Yes, these are 105 degrees C rated, but they are, as you can see, placed quite close to the output transistor heatsink and uh, probably because they were lower quality and because they are taking all the ripple from the, the output, they kind of uh, failed after uh, a number of years. So the first thing I would do right now is to replace those two caps and then check the power supply again for the output voltages.
the back of this power supply looks okay we don't see any burn marks or anything obvious that would indicate uh, another failure so the first thing i'm going to do is to add some solder to the pads of these uh, capacitors some leaded solder because that will uh, lower the melting temperature now i'm going to grab one of these uh, capacitors and uh, i'm going to try to heat both of its pins at the same time using this uh, teeth shape and it's off it was that easy you see using uh, leaded solder on the pads does melt does uh, bring the, the melting temperature low and uh, keeps the solder molten for a longer time for a longer time and let's see these are 1000 microfarads 16 volts let me have a search in uh, my capacitor bin and see if i can find some replacements and i found these uh, replacements in my capacitor bin uh, these are 1000 microfarad 16 volts same as the original uh, ones on the board but these are fujicons 105 degrees c rated and i believe the tm series are uh, low esr so these will be perfect for for this application and fujicon is a decent brand of uh, capacitors right so now the the um holes are covered with solder and I'm going to try to fix that. See, I got some nice uh, shiny joints on these new capacitors. Now I'm going to snap those leads to length and I'm going to use my new side cutter. So let's try and put the power supply back in on its uh, position. Let's watch the power LED as I turn this thing on. And we get power. And we also get image on the monitor. So now that I have proven that the monitor is working, I didn't even have to go through measuring voltages. I noticed those caps were bad. I replaced them and everything seems to work now. Uh, I'm just going to put all the screws back and reassemble the monitor. So here is a test with the monitor showing my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, by the way, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It's a good way to receive notifications whenever I uh, upload content. And I hope you enjoyed this repair video. Don't forget to hit the like button and I will see you next time.